Well, the Judicial Service Commission is holding these interviews for judges for top courts in South Africa. Yesterday it began with 11 shortlisted candidates who are vying for those five positions at the Supreme Court of Appeal. Other positions will also be filled with a total of 42 candidates uh, to be interviewed. Uh, so this is going to be a long stretch of interviews. To discuss, we're joined by Research and Advocacy Officer of Judges Matter, Zikona Ndlebe. Uh, Ms Ndlebe, thank you for, for being with us as always. So uh, Justice Mandisa Maya, the Deputy uh, Constitutional Court uh, Judge uh, who herself has been through this process and is now the Deputy Chief Justice uh, rather, she's chairing the interviews. If anyone has insight into the problems of the Supreme Court, I guess it would be her. Hi, Francis. That's absolutely correct. Um, Justice Mandisa Maya, who is now the Deputy Chief Justice, headed the the Supreme Court of Appeal for a long time, and she ensured that there's transformation in, at the Supreme Court of Appeal while she was the president. And um, she had said during her interview for that for the position of president that they said that she would commit to transforming the SCA uh, in terms of um, gender representativity, um, race, and collegiality, because there have been concerns in the past that there are there is no collegiality at the SCA. And um, she should be, and I'm sure that she is well aware of all the concerns that are relating to the SCA. And some of those concerns are coming up during these interviews, mm. as we have seen. Yeah, you put it politely, uh, a lack of collegia uh, collegiality, but uh, some are saying the bullying of, of judges, um, a lot of claims. So, so her inside knowledge really worked against uh, one of the High Court uh, judges, Mandela Makwale, uh, Makwala rather, who said that when he, uh, she said that when he stood in at the Supreme Court of Appeal, he missed meetings. He didn't get an important judgment out. Uh, he struggled to proofread and get the facts right. Uh, so, so very scathing. She, she's not holding back if she thinks that anybody does not meet the standard. You're absolutely correct. So we saw yesterday with uh, Judge Makaula, who is a judge in the Eastern Cape and who's been acting at the Supreme Court of Appeal until last month, the end of last month. Um, so a lot of information came out uh, during yesterday's interviews and he did miss an important um, meeting of the Supreme Court of Appeal, uh, which judges have after a matter has been heard and we ascribe the person responsible for writing judgments has to attend that meeting and he missed that meeting. And there was absolutely no, no excuse for that. So there's a lot of information that is coming out. And one of the things that was said in his interview was that he could not grasp the facts of a matter where he had to scribe the judgment. So there, there are quite a lot of concerns coming out. And we see that the professor who's sitting in the JSC also raising questions about um, judges who come from the high court and act at the Supreme Court of Appeal being expected to change their writing style to meet the style of the SCA. And he's asking whether that is appropriate. And that's I think that speaks to what you've mentioned, uh, bullying at the SCA. There's allegations of that, uh, but um, we all we know that there have been issues at the SCA and Justice Mandisamaya tried to resolve those issues. And it is coming as a surprise that those issues seem to still exist at the SCA. And the question is, who will deal with them yeah. if they indeed exist? Another person of interest was uh, Judge Pitt Kuhn, who's presiding over former President Jacob Zuma's corruption case in the Peter Maritzburg High Court. Um, and he spoke about how he was gutted uh, by what the former Chief Justice said about him, Mekhoeng Mekhoeng, that was during previous interviews. Can you give us some context there? Uh, and, and what happens now? I guess the members of the JSC just have to decide for themselves. So Judge Kuhn uh, is a judge. Um, he's acted at, at the SCA. He has appeared before the JSC before. In April of 2021, he appeared. And there were concerns that were raised by the former Chief Justice Mohueng about his treatment of uh, advocates, uh, people that appeared before him, collegiality, again, being an issue. And that is something that came across very strongly in his interview in April 2021. And it is something that Justice Mandisamaya, well, the Deputy Chief Justice Mandisamaya um, raised at the beginning of 
Judge Kuhn's interview, asking him whether he would like to comment or say anything about what had transpired in his previous interviews. And um, he did express a lot of um, dissatisfaction that um, his, how he treats other people and advocates and his colleagues is something of a concern that has been raised in the past by the former Chief Justice. And that is also something that he says, um, he thinks about a lot because every time a person researches him on the internet, for example, that is something that comes up. It's one of the first things that come up when his name is searched. And uh, he's, he, he expressed a lot of dissatisfaction. And um, this is something that emanated from the previous interviews and we saw it uh, coming out very strongly again during these interviews. And I think um, his interview also goes back to what we've been saying as, the, as, as, as judges matter about criteria, the issue of the criteria, because you will find that uh, during the JSC interviews, if there's a certain aspect that is coming strongly out of an interview, that is, the, that is what is going to dominate a person's interview as you've seen in the past, even during the um, interviews for the position of Chief Justice. So it goes back to whether or not the JSC should, well, we know that the JSC should have, have criteria, but the JSC has not really focused on having a set criteria at this point, although we saw in April some movement towards that direction, but it has not happened. Mm. And we, we, we see the negative impact of not having a criteria. We see a lot of issues dominating a person's interview and well, I wouldn't say unnecessarily, but uh, to a, a certain extent, there should be limitations to certain issues that um, come out because there's other factors that need to be considered when a person yeah. is being interviewed by the GSC. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. So one issue can become so dominant uh, in an interview because there's not that, that checklist. And, and let's be clear, the, the judges are being grilled, uh, but the Judicial Service Commission is also being watched because there have been claims, um, a talk about bullying of, of the behaviour of, of some of the members in the past in terms of how they uh, interview. And when David Unterhalter was passed over, they, they didn't get enough judges to even come forward. Um, and some were saying that's because the process can be humiliating, it can be hard, it can affect their, their reputation. Uh, how, how is that playing out? Um, how is that uh, decorum playing out this time or, or lack of decorum? Uh, you know, it's been quite a big concern for us that the JSC does not have decorum uh, and it goes back to, it will always go back to the issue of the criteria. We've just seen now um, the current candidate who's been interviewed, Judge Matojane, who is a judge at Gauteng, and he's been asked a question by uh, the AFF leader, Julius Malema, about, um, about a case that, well, basically whether prosecution or uh, incarceration of the elderly is necessary, basically. That's how I'm going to sum it. And um, this is a, 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 perhaps a genuine question from the leader of the AFF, Julius Malema, but um, the fact remains that there are certain questions. This is something. This is a question that has come out in the past during Judge Mado Janet's interview, coming from um, the AFF leader Julius Malema. So, my our concern has always been that the JC does not have a set criteria that commissioners um, adhere to, that commissioners follow, and um, it will all, it always goes back to the same issue. The JC needs to have a set criteria so that commissioners know exactly what questions, what kind of questions they can ask candidates. And uh, during Matojani's interview right now, his answer was that um, as the EFF leader, Julius Malema, he sits in parliament. So perhaps the question that he's raising is something that can be dealt with in parliament, basically saying that the JSC is not the correct forum to ask um, the question that he'd asked. So it goes back to criteria, Francis. Mm. All right, so I understand what you're saying, that that would guide the, the questioning. Finally, we're seeing again one of the question that, uh, questions that often comes up is about women, uh, male judges, senior judges being asked how they view uh, a, a lack of, of women leaders uh, on the bench. And one of them said, look, we have to consider patriarchy and things like that. Uh, my question to you is, 
are the judges um, expected, uh, should they, uh, have, have a feminist strain? Should, should the women be there saying, we need more women here? Should the men be there uh, rallying and, and saying, we have to get more females in leadership positions? Um, Francis, the simple question is that Section 174 of the Constitution requires that um, the judiciary is representative of, of all race and gender, basically. And uh, it's a constitutional imperative that there be women in leadership, well, in, in, in the judiciary. But what we've observed is that although there's been some change in the judiciary, because there are now some women in, 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 the, in deputy leadership positions, for example, we've got... Um, and the DJPs, Goliath, Mbele, and Pasele, Patswane, and Semenya. But currently, we don't have any women in, in leadership positions, judge presidents. We don't have a chief justice who is a woman, we've got a deputy chief justice uh, who is a woman for the first time. So um, it is not an expectation that men go before the JSC and say that women have to be appointed, but it's a constitution, constitutional imperative that the, the, the judiciary be representative of um, gender and transformation and, and, and race and gender, basically. Um, so we don't have women in leadership positions, and it's a problem. It's a problem that has to be resolved, and the problem can only be resolved by the JSC making recommendations uh, to the president to appoint duly qualified uh, women who have the necessary expertise and experience because there are such women. And that is something that we're going to have to watch closely during these interviews because there are women who are shortlisted and have been nominated and will be interviewed by the JSC for leadership positions. So the question is, are those women going to be appointed in those yeah. positions? All right, thank you so much. Uh, we'll follow those interviews. Zikona and Lebe, Judges Matter Research and Advocacy Officer.